Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. We're gonna hop right into these DIY projects and thrift flips. We're gonna start with a front door hanger. I wanted to share with you a clip of the wood rounds that I get from Home Depot. I love getting them from here. Um, they are, I believe, about 18 inches um, round, and I'm gonna start by sanding down both sides as well as the actual sides of um, the wood round to ensure that I'm going to get a nice smooth finish because I am going to be applying a stencil on it um, from my Cricut. So I did stain this wood round front and back using um, just the Waverly Antique Wax. I just applied it to create like a faux stain. It dries super, super fast. You don't have to wait the 24 hours like a regular stain. So I did cut out this word welcome on my Cricut. I created a stencil. I have several videos on how to create a stencil with your Cricut. Um, if you are interested, I will link them in the description box for you. And I was just showing that I am going to be um, using the lines of this wood round um, because it's like pressed pine boards together you can see the lines of each board so I am using that to create my straight line to apply the painters tape so that I can paint this inner portion white so I am going to paint um, the sides as well I'm just not going to paint the back so I'm going to give this two solid coats of white paint I'm going to let it thoroughly dry and then from there, I am going to um, apply my stencil to the white strip. And I am using stencil vinyl. Um, again, I will link all of this in the, um, in the description box for you. So I'm just centering my stencil onto the white portion of the wood round. And then once I do remove the transfer tape, I am going to, um, I'm going to paint the stencil with um, black paint. But before I do that, to seal in um, the words to ensure that I'm not going to get any bleed through, I like to paint on just a thin layer of the base paint. So in this case, I'm doing white um, as the base because the base is white. And then I will go with the top color that I'm going that I'm going to be painting. I do not like to use Mod Podge as a sealer. I know a lot of people do. Mod Podge just does not work for me when it comes to um, not creating bleed through. And also um, sometimes when I've used Mod Podge in the past, it has caused the paint to chip up when I remove the stencil. So I like to do the paint, the thin layer of paint versus Mod Podge. But if the Mod Podge works for you, then that is awesome. I wish it worked for me sometimes. So I just um, very carefully remove the stencil while the paint is still wet. I like to remove it when it's still wet. It is personal preference. And I also don't pull super hard on the stencil. That way I won't get any um, tearing of the actual like wood underneath of it and I also won't um, potentially peel up any of the wording with the stencil so that's why I like to go slow and I trim pieces off if I need to and then I weed out the necessary areas afterwards so because this is a front door hanger I am going to be doing um, two coats of the helmsman um, polycrylic on the front and then on the back, I just do one coat. Um, you know, the helmsman is made for outdoors. It protects um, the, you know, the item from the outdoor elements. So that's why I'm doing the two solid coats on the the front. And I just use D hooks on the back to create a hanger. And I again am using the lines from the like the pressed pine boards and then measuring and then screwing them into place. Um, I have attached wire to the back for the person. This is actually an order for somebody. Um, sometimes I don't, it just, it's personal preference if they want um, that or not. So I went with these colors um, because like I said, this is an order for someone and they wanted, um, 
not like beachy, but bright colors like this. So I am creating um, a bow and this is how I do it. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to explain it very well, but I have two strips of, th of each color and I believe they're like 12 or 14 inches long and then I fold them in half or roughly in half and I pinch the middle and then I alternate um, the colors so you get them all, you know, they're not all like the same color isn't next to each other and then I'm just using a zip tie to tie it off and then I will spread the, um, the, the leftover part of the ribbon and I will trim the ribbon as needed and then um, from there once I get the bow exactly how I want it I'm going to be adding greenery to the sides and I will be applying it um, attaching it using my brad nailer so this greenery I absolutely love this faux eucalyptus I get it from Amazon if I can find the link for it I will it's been a while since I've ordered it I love using this greenery for front door hangers as well as when I um, I use it for other like vases and stuff I just think it's a really pretty um, faux eucalyptus and it's really not that expensive either for the amount um, that you get, um, you know, in, in the package. So I really hope you guys enjoy this front door hanger and we are going to get ready to move on to the next one. Um, the next project is a kind of like a thrift flip. I'm kind of combining. So this piece I actually made for myself a long, long time ago. I think, um, it was, in a YouTube video maybe like a year ago and I created um, this piece for my front porch well I am ready to rearrange things on my front porch you guys if you haven't seen my front door hanger or my new front door sign I'll link that video for you guys to watch so this piece was where the new one is and I added transfers to this so I am just sanding it down to remove those transfers so that when I paint over this I will get um, a smooth it'll be a smooth surface you won't see any of the transfer um, left over so I'm going for more of a farmhouse look on this one and I am going to be um, doing a second color on top but I wanted a darker color on the bottom so I am doing this dark gray I think it's like hurricane gray by Dixie Belle and I'm giving it a solid coat over the entire piece and then from there I'm going to be adding white on top of it and I'll be distressing it back so you'll see this gray versus all the other colors that I had going on um, before I wanted to try the uh, I've seen people use Vaseline um, as a way to do like a faux distress look. I did not have any Vaseline. I've done the candle wax method before, so I decided to find something similar to Vaseline. And I had Neosporin um, on hand, so I used that instead. And it worked great, um, but I definitely want to try Vaseline see if it's any different. So I'm just applying the Neosporin in random spots or trying to be as random as possible. And then I am doing the same method that I do with the wax. So I'm going to be doing a thick coat of my top layer. And I'm going to try not to do many, like too many passes over top of where I applied the Neosporin so that I'll get more of that crackle effect going on. And I did a fairly good job. There are a couple areas where I ended up having to go back and forth so it kind of smeared the Neosporin and it didn't get that crackle but it still did distress back it just didn't have that crackle look but it still worked out fine so this is um, where you can see where the areas did crackle and I did take um, I believe it was like 180 I think that was the the sandpaper that I had on here and I just gave it a light distress just to remove any more of the paint that was you know over top of the neosporin and I tried to avoid um, the crackle areas because I really wanted to keep that as best as possible so I finally got it um, distressed back 
to where I wanted it. I did seal it um, using, I just did Rust-Oleum um, spray paint, or not spray paint, the Rust-Oleum clear to, to seal this in. And then from here, I, this is where the thrift lip part comes in. So this was a, this was a thrift lip I did, um, I don't know, a couple months ago on this item. I had it in my booth and it never sold. So I decided to combine it with this window pane. And I am using this dark gray. I forget the color, but I really liked how dark it was and how it was going to it's still a gray, but it's going to, I thought it would be a nice contrast to the, to the gray underneath the window pane. And then I'm just doing a, a dry brush of white chalk paint over top of this. Now where I went wrong, in my opinion, um, so when I sealed it, I did just polycrylic. Um, I kind of regret doing that. I feel like I should have done just a clear wax and it wouldn't have been as shiny, but I don't know. You guys will have to let me know what you think. I just did one thin coat of this polycrylic because I had it out. I was working on other stuff and I figured I would use it, but I think maybe I should have done clear wax. Um, I don't know. I still think it turned out fine, but it is a little shinier than like the window pane itself. And then here I'm just adding that eucalyptus, the same eucalyptus I used on the first project, um, I added into here and I did put this into my booth. Um, so hopefully someone will want to bring it home and add it to their space. So I really hope you guys like this one and let me know what you guys think of it. Um, I'm really excited for this next project because I have been wanting to make over um, these two pieces that I thrifted for several weeks now and they've just been in my thrift box if you will and I'm finally taking them out. So I thrifted both of these. I think they're like partridges maybe. I don't know. Um, I've seen them before. And I thought they were really, I really like them, but I wanted to do the faux concrete look like I've done in the past with other items. Every other like figurine that I've done with the faux concrete look that I've put in my booth has sold. So I wanted to do the same thing um, with these. And I kind of regret, I, I haven't put them in my booth yet. Um, I want, I, that's my plan, but I kind of may keep them because I really, really like how they turn out. So maybe I'll hold on to them for a little bit and then put them in my booth. But anyways, back to this project. So I am doing a dark gray, um, as like the saw, as the base color. I have to, uh, do two coats of this chalk paint because, um, for whatever reason, it just, I, I think because the, the feathers were so, there was so much texture in them, that's why I needed to do two coats. So originally I was just going to do a dry brush with the, this white chalk paint and call it a day, but I realized that I really liked the, um, the original partridges, how they had, or birds, how they had a little bit of the black, um, paint at the end of their feathers. So I ended up adding, dry brushing some black paint too. And what I did, so with this white um, dry brush, I'm going in all different directions. I'm going like against the feathers, um, you know, like, like upwards on the feathers. I'm going down on the feathers. I'm going side to side. I'm getting all over. Well, with the, the black um, paint, I'm just going like upwards. If you can see what I'm doing, like I'm going from the base of the bird and I'm like brushing upwards because I really just want to highlight the tips of the feathers with the, the black chalk paint. So once I got the birds um, dry brushed to how I wanted them to look, I did end up sealing them with the Rust-Oleum clear um, spray versus um, like a clear wax. Total personal preference. I was just in the mood to use the clear mat, um, the clear coat, 
because of dry time so I could get these pictures done and I really actually like the clear like how this finish turned out um but again personal preference so you guys are gonna have to let me know what you guys think I think they are just so stinking cute I really really like them all right, so we are getting ready to go into our final project. It is another thrift flip, and I have been dying to try this method for a very, very long time. So I grabbed this box as well as the one behind it. I didn't do the other box, but I grabbed this box from the thrift store, and I've been sitting on it for a little bit, but this one technique I have seen on a couple channels. So I'm using this um, the Seashore um, stamp set by IOD, and I saw this on, um, I believe her channel is Create Your Own Cozy, and I've also seen it on Sonnet's Garden Bloom, and like I said, I've been wanting to try this for a long time, and these are the only stamps that I have, which is why I am using these. Again, I know that they're, this is more beachy than my other projects, but I really wanted to try this technique. So I picked the seashell that I wanted, I am applying it onto this this side of the board um, or box just using permanent ink and then I'm going to paint the entire inside of the stamp and like a little bit on the outside like I want to cover the whole stamp and I am using um, what is this color it's the vintage duck egg so if you guys watched my last video I started to paint uh, the dining room table this color and then I stopped. So I really wanted to use this color for something small and I really love this color for this project. <laughs> so like I said, I am covering this entire, um, oh my gosh, stamp with, um, with the paint. I'm going to let it fully dry and then I am going to re-stamp this seashell on top of it so it's gonna kind of it looks exactly like if I used um, like if I decoupaged something on or I was using a transfer I really really like this technique and I loved it so much that I ended up doing the other side of this box a um, a seahorse so this way you know if someone wants a seahorse or they want a seashell they've got both. So this one, I ended up painting it white and this one took a little bit longer because it was a lot skinnier and had a lot more like detail around the, you know, the edges of the stamp. But I, like I said, I just really, really liked this method. I want to get more stamps, um, and you know, give it a shot on other things. I just really like the look. It looks I don't want to use the word like high end, but it looks like it's so much more than just paint and a stamp. I just, I really like it. Um, so you guys are going to have to let me know if you've tried this before, if you like it, definitely let me know. And I also, I just, I want to know, do you guys like themed videos? Um, you know, like are, you know, if it's all like farmhouse themed or all, you know, all projects using a certain product or, um, you know, like all, you know, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like sometimes my videos like this one are just kind of ran like, it's just random projects and there's no real theme to them. Um, so let me know what you guys like and if you guys do prefer more of a theme um I will try to do that I I do a lot of custom orders too so that's why you know I'll try and squeeze them into videos and it's not necessarily all the same theme um I just love creating different things too so I kind of just go where my creativity goes so let me know in the comments what you guys think and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Just say hi in the comments if you don't really want to say anything else. I just want to say hi and I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will definitely see you guys next Thursday. If you guys didn't catch um, 
my last community post. My videos will now be on Thursdays instead of Wednesdays just because of work right now. So again, I appreciate all of you. Have a great rest of your week and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.